So we've had some setbacks. Okay? We've had some setbacks. We've lost some members of our vengeance crew. Key members that were able to infiltrate the local bicycle groups. You know, I can talk about it now because I'm on record saying, hey, these, these are no longer in my group. I have disowned them. We're now splitting. They're now a branch of my group. And they don't necessarily see things the way I do. And they will never acknowledge being in my group because that's part of the oath that they took. But they will always be misusing the information I gave them, including military tactics. So, you know, consider this me throwing the, the, the good cops a bone, whatever you want to call it. My vengeance group now doesn't consist of any bicyclers around here that I know. Unless some of the other ones join in with them, which I, I wouldn't recommend. I mean, it's very hard to command a fucking army from fucking the middle of nowhere without being able to call them, text them, or email them, or send them any kind of electronic correspondence. You know, without, um, you know, the government have it, keeping track, putting tracers on my car and cell phone and tracing me through my cell phone, trying to listen to me and my conversations to my cell phone, I gotta do all kinds of shit. In fact, one thing I'm missing right now is my cell phone. Why? Because they're taking the tracers out before they return it to me. <laughs> yeah, he thought you had problems. These people are really going way out of their way to demonize me as a terrorist. Either they've infiltrated my group, either it was a, it was a bunch of feds who were planted there from the beginning, I, I, that's impossible because we just met on a random fucking fluke at a local park, you know, out here in, um, I can't tell you where I live, but, you know, a local park around the corner. That's where we met. And now, it seems that what they believe is quite fanatical and contradictory and we had to split ways and part of what they believe is that there's power in numbers and that it's okay to be part of the Freemasonic lodges they're trying to argue with me that Freemasonry is the problem and cite, cite my own fucking references of Nazi Germany, how the, the Masons were persecuted for not portraying their oath by the Nazis and tortured, blah, blah, blah. I don't condone any reckless attacks. And I don't condone any useless threats. They seem to believe that Masons are okay. It's okay to, you know, the end justifies the means. It's okay to threaten people. And it's okay to get angry at people. And it's okay to plot on them by behind their back. I don't believe in that. I believe in fair play. The only only reason there would be any kind of guerrilla war or cold war or covert war with the government is an extreme situation. You know, there, there's a lot of different extreme situations, but it, you know, it has to be an extreme situation. So when I talk about oh Carl Young and you know you say I, I don't know Young. I don't know. I don't know Young. I've just been reading this book so fucking much that it's fucking worn out. The pages are worn out. The fucking, you know what I'm saying? It's worn to fucking shit. I've been going over it and beating my head against the fucking wall. Let me read you a clip from this shit and show you how sick this motherfucker is. Okay? Matter of fact, I'll read you a clip from that page. In this tale, the anima symbolizes an unreal dream of love, happiness, and material warmth. A dream that lures men away from reality. The hunter is drowned because he ran after a wishful fantasy that could not be fulfilled. Another way in which the negative anima in a man's personality can be revealed is in waspish, poisonous, effeminate remarks by which he devalues everything. Remarks of this sort always contain a cheap twisting of the truth and are in a subtle way, a subtle way destructive. There are legends throughout the world in which a poison damsel, as they would call her in the Orient, appears. She is a beautiful creature who has weapons hidden in her body or secret poison with which she kills her lovers during their first night together. In this guise, the anima is as cold and reckless as certain uncanny aspects of nature itself, and in Europe is often expressed to this day by the belief in witches. And they go on to show us some pictures of, you know, the vampresses. Oh, there's no vampresses. Just in every tale in the world, there's vampresses, because women embody the, the vampress, the snake kind of a personality. Okay? So when you read through their own tales, and their own, you know, their own, they're, they're talking about, you know, what is this this psychologist and this who who works with psychiatrists talking about? Okay. Psychology is part of the demon structure of the world, 
but not, I don't believe that every psychologist is bad. No, no, no. But do I believe that a fucking majority of them are? Have I met ones who are good? Have I ever had one that are good evaluate me? Oh, no. And if they did, would they come to the same conclusion as the ones who are bad because they're brainwashed by the same schools of thought? Probably. I have nothing against psychology. In fact, the school, the last school I went to, one of you know one of the things they taught that they one of the top majors that they produce, one of the top degrees they give out is psychology. And before they get that degree, they go through certain courses that make them understand that the minorities are going through certain things that you don't understand. And that even though we've given you these courses, you still don't understand. So, in all fairness, somebody who worked hard to get a psychology degree and who has a good heart should be allowed to practice. But a bunch of demons and shrinks and people who want to hold the black man down, they should be rounded up and shot. I know I sound like Hitler saying this type of stuff. I'm not saying just round up every person indiscriminately. I'm saying round up the guilty and put a bullet in their head and let's replace them with some righteous people who don't care about money, who are going to use their money completely to help the poor. And we're talking about symbolism, right? You think Young doesn't understand religious symbolism? You think psychologists didn't work on religious symbolism in order to, in order to manipulate the, con the conscious and the psyche and the enemas of men? Thank you.